All right, we're back for the part two on how to make an awesome Lego animation in Blender. We've imported our model into Blender using the Mechabricks website, and we've rendered out a basic scene or basic image with lighting, showing you how to make cameras, and we have two different cameras set up. Now, you want to use minifigures. Minifigures is how you is what we want. We want to animate a character doing something. I'm not going to show you how to do that in this episode. That's the next one. But this one, I'm going to show you how to import a character and set him up for rigging. Also, how to make a custom texture. In our case, Commander Drag from the 313. I'll make a new collection. Name this Characters. And we're going to go back to Mecha Bricks. I've already made my character, but you can make your own character by using the same way we did this, but with the minifigure mini sections, different categories from all different kinds of, of, uh, of themes. <clears throat> I'm going to open my This is my guy that I used to uh, <laughs> make a 313th character. You can actually modify uh, textures in Blender, or sorry, in Mechabricks. But I find it's easier, especially since we're going to be working in Blender anyways, to just download this and then change the colors in Blender. So I'm going to go File, Export, Blender Add-on. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to make a new Blend file for our character. And then we're going to append that, that collection into here, which just makes everything more organized. And you can then append that character into a new scene if you have multiple scenes with a character. It just makes organization easier and it um, limits the amount of times you have to set up a character. So we're going to save this blend file. I'm going to make a new one. Delete everything. I'm going to go File, Import, Mecha Bricks, Downloads, Untitled Model 5. And this is our character. He is in the flesh. Um, in my scene, he doesn't have a gun, so I'm just going to delete his gun. You're also going to go and you're going to delete this empty. In the case of the characters, I said this about the set, but in the case of the characters, deleting the empty is absolutely necessary. You have to do it for the rigging to work. You can leave all these parts. These are all the parts. Just leave them. Don't delete any of those, of course. But yeah, here's our character. We can see what he looks like. And he looks like a bit of a doofus. Um, we're going to change that by modifying the textures. I'm going to drop down to open a new window and go to the shader editor. Now this is one of the big reasons why I decided to make this new tutorial series because the last one I did, this has been changed and so it now looks a lot different and I noticed a lot of people had questions about it. We're going to open up the decoration node by clicking this little thing on the top right corner which opens the new section and this right here is the image node. This is sourcing the image that it's displaying on, his, on, his, on this case his arm because that's what we have selected. Here we have the image, 3198. So I'm just going to copy this, Command C, open another tab, go to the image editor, and we're going to open that image. So I'm just going to search it, enter, and this is the image that's being shown on his arm. We don't want that image, we want the 313th image. I'm going to go image, save as tutorial series, <clears throat> and I'm going to rename it just so it's not a code. This will be the left arm save image. And we're going to do this for all of the objects that we want to change. So the right arm, the helmet, and the torso. All right. Now we're going to open up Photoshop. You can use GIMP as well, which is a free version essentially. Uh, it doesn't really matter what kind of photo editing software you use, as long as it lets you do this. Here we're at the folder with our images and we're going to open these in Photoshop. I'll start with the helmet because it probably be the easiest. I'm going to open this up, open with um, Adobe Photoshop. All right, now that you have your thing open in your image editor of choice, we're going to change the color in our case of this blue. We don't want it to be blue, we want it to be green. Um, I'm just gonna, I know what green I want, but I'm just gonna choose this dark green here. And we're just gonna change the color of it by now that you've changed the color, I'm gonna go file, export, click export to our folder. I'm gonna make a new folder called edited textures. 
And this is our new helmet, save that. And we're gonna do this for all of the, the things. For the torso, open in Photoshop. Open the torso, you can do the same thing, you can change the colors, you can do whatever you want. But I've already, already have the image that I want to use for the torso. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not gonna import and select that. But what I would have done, gone like clone trooper, Lego decal or whatever, downloaded this, cut it out, arranged it to fit the, the UV maps of the object, designed my own design, and you can also go and put it into Illustrator and trace the image to increase the quality. And I've also done it for the arms, so I won't show that either. I'll just drag them into this folder for you to know what they look like. So here are um, my textures. I've got the torso, beautiful, got the arms, Beautiful. Where they are in the image is very important. You just have to match it up. And the helmet and the other right arm. And here you can obviously get a different style of helmet. This is Jax's helmet from the film. I'm just changing the way the, the image looks in Photoshop. All right, now that you have all your images edited, go back to Blender. You can minimize the this window here by not doing that. Um, shader editor all right pull up the shader editor again click on the one you want to edit first open the decoration node once again go to the the image node and you're gonna open a new image and you're gonna go to your edit textures and you open your torso bam there it is look how fresh that looks do the same thing for each of them just switch the image this is the left arm Bam, left arm is done. The right arm, bam, right arm is done. And the legs are already done. Let's do the helmet. Boom, look at that. Uh, look at the green is a little bit different. That's funny. Um, I'm not gonna switch that. So there you have it. Changing the textures of what you downloaded to make custom ones. I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna call this 313th Trooper. This is our file for the character. And now, I'm going to show you how to rig him for animation. I'm going to name the collection also Clone Trooper. I'm going to show you how to rig it so that we can animate him. And don't do that, what I just did. Don't move any of these objects. We're going to install another add on. Now, this add on is kind of special because it's an add on I was actually a part of making it. It's the rig that we would use to animate. Now, in the other tutorial, I showed you how to um, download a rig and manually parent the bones. You don't have to do that anymore. This add-on, we actually coded it so that it would automatically do that for you. So thank us for saving time for you. It makes life so much easier when you're just constantly creating new characters and having to rig them each time. So we're going to go ahead and download this add-on. Open up your browser. Go to this link, which is in the description. This is the add-on page on GitHub. And to download it, all you do is click clone, download zip. This will download the whole zip. And again, do not unzip that file. Go back and install it like how we did it before. Edit preferences, install. I've already installed it. And if I search it up, there it is for you. Click the check mark and you're good. And as you go, if you go over to the panel here on the right, you will see the epic fig rig. And this is our beautiful add-on that we've created. And in the next episode, I'm going to run you through this entire panel on how it works for animation purposes. In this purpose, in today's purpose, we are just going to be using this top button, which only rigs the selected figure to create the rig that we will use to then move his limbs to animate, to make him walk, to make him jump, to make him shoot you, to make him shoot someone else. We're going to select all of the parts. You can either do this by selecting this in the menu, or you can select it like this, or you can click A if there's nothing else. Either way works fine. Select everything. Click Rig Selected Minifigure. That's it. That's all you have to do. Now, if I pull up the rig into the, in, if I go into pose mode, voila. You can move your character. It's beautiful. Look at this. 
Oh my god. And we have these new bones here that weren't on the last version, which lets you do a bunch of other cool stuff as well. I can rock them back and forth. This bottom bone is the master bone, which I can move the entire piece. There's two different arm bones. One lets you move out of socket. This one restricts you to being in socket like a Lego figure would. And for the helmet, you can't actually see the bones because his helmet is covering it. So if you were to exit pose mode and hide it, you would see these bones here, which let you move his head. This moves the, the helmet. And there's actually a setting under here where you can change the size of these. Although one of the recent updates of Blender actually made it so that does not work anymore. We can easily fix it. We just haven't got around to it. But there's an easy workaround to turn the helmet back on. I'll adjust that. And I want to be able to click it with the helmet being on, right? Go back to the bone. Uh, I guess I have to turn the helmet off again to see it. Click the bone. Go to the bone properties. Go down to viewport display. I'm just going to scale X. Just makes it bigger in the X direction. Now we can see it. And I'm going to scale it down a little bit because it doesn't want to be too exaggerated. And you can play with the shape a little bit more if I wanted to scale Y. Make it a little taller. Scale Z so we can see it behind him. And there we go. That kind of wraps perfectly around his shape. And let's say I wanted to scale this part too. I can do that very easily with the same. Oh, actually, I want to. Since this is a circle, I'm going to want to scale it uh, uniformly. If I go one, 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 that's pretty perfect right there. The reason that you would want to have two different bones for this, because if I if I rotate the helmet. And I turn off the helmet. The head is still straight. That's that's if you had like hair that you wanted to animate on its own, rather than having to turn the head as well. But for our purposes, we're only going to be using the main bone because it doesn't really matter since we can't see his face. So that is how you rig a character in Blender and change his decals to your liking. And the next episode, I'm going to start showing you how to actually animate. Very simple. It's actually extremely similar to the process of animating stop motion and I'll teach you how to most mimic that process if that's where you're coming from thanks for watching stick around